A few years ago, a story appeared in an American newspaper that wanted to prove that miracles happen more frequently than one may think. A poor widow in Sao Paulo, Brazil, had four children to feed, but her purse was practically always empty. She went to a church and prayed to the Lord for a long, long time. At one point, she heard a voice inside her telling her to go to the supermarket nearby and fill some trolleys with uh, the groceries necessary to meet her children's need for several weeks. She would then have to go to check out number seven. The woman went to the supermarket, filled three trolleys full of groceries, and then went to till number seven. However, the cashier was closing for his lunch break and told her to go to another checkout, as there were many open. The woman replied, but my father told me to go to checkout number seven. And confidently, she stood there waiting in front of the empty till. The cashier, returning after an hour, was very surprised to find the woman still at his till, but uh, he was even more surprised to hear an announcement over the store's loudspeaker saying, Good afternoon, customers. Today is the seventh anniversary of the opening of this supermarket, and the person at checkout number seven will receive the full value of her shopping for free. Miracle or coincidence? Are some of what we call miracles simply lucky coincidences, or are they instead the work of God intervening through normal facts of life? How can we distinguish between them? Well, when an extraordinary event, told to me by a reliable source, happened after a prayer invoking the help of the Lord or a saint, well, to me, it sounds like a miracle like what happened to Victor in 1902. Victor was a seminarian studying for the priesthood and that morning his father was going to pick him up because his sister Margaret was getting married. When the carriage arrived, Victor immediately ran to meet his father and was very happy to see that the vehicle was driven by Mr. Alfio, his father's friend and the owner of the hired carriage. As soon as he was seated in the buggy next to his father, the latter said to him, I have a nice surprise for you. When we have left the town, you can mount to the box and help Alfio drive the carriage. And so it was. After leaving the town, Victor climbed in next to Alfio and felt very happy. Before long, however, the weather worsened. A few drops began to fall and suddenly lightning broke out. The young horse began to squirm and no matter how hard Alfio tried to calm him down, there was just no way. A second bolt of light and burst much closer and the poor frightened beast reared, fell back and tried to back away. At the last jolt, Victor fell right under the wheels of the carriage. Victor was terrified when he realized that his life depended on a half turn of the wheel. In a whisper, he managed to say, St. Anthony, the wheel will crush me. Please, please help me. At those words, the horse suddenly calmed down. He seemed to obey someone who was speaking softly to him, stroking him. Someone who, however, was not there. Victor was saved and when he became a priest, often narrated this experience to his parishioners, advising them never to be afraid and always turn to St. Anthony. And now let's address our prayer to St. Anthony. Dear St. Anthony, please help those whom the Lord has chosen as ministers to be always vigilant and faithful in their service. Amen.